What's going on guys? My name is Derek. Welcome to my channel. Um, does your s 1000 R is it hard to start? Does it not start at all? Uh, while you're riding it and you get on the throttle, is it sputtering and bucking and hesitating? Uh, when you're leaned over coming out of a corner and you're getting on the gas, does it feel like you're missing a few horsepower? Does it, again, surge and not go when you tell it to and then all of a sudden take off like a scalded cat? Well, then you probably have a fuel problem. And most likely your problem is this. We're going to talk about this when we get back. <laughs> Welcome back guys. So the problem that you're most likely experiencing is a fuel pump failure or a fuel pump that's in the process of failing. Um, in fact, the first gen S1000RRs, don't quote me on second gen and other ones, but first gen S1000RRs had a, um, a fuel pump issue or uh, one that was known to fail. In fact, they even had a recall on it. And um, my bike is now 10 years old, um, has 24, 25,000 miles on it, and it's experiencing fuel pump failure issues or one that's in the process of failure. Uh, failure. Um, what do I mean by that? So uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, um, I was at my uh, favorite track or one of my favorite tracks. I was at Palmer uh, with this bike and uh, leaned over in a corner. I hit the apex. I'm starting to accelerate out of the corner and the bike literally falls on its face. It starts sputtering, it's surging, and it just won't accelerate. And then all of a sudden, when I bring the bike up full straight and get on the throttle 100%, bike takes off like a scalded cat. Um, most recently at um, New York Safety Track, the bike did it everywhere, whether I was leaned over or straight up. It was just, you know, below, I'd say about 9,000, 9,500 RPMs. And then once it got to about 10,000 RPMs, it just absolutely ripped and took off. Initially, I thought it might be my ECU. Uh, the ECU that's in this bike right now, the stock one, I had flashed by Alpha Racing on two different times. Um, but it turned out after that, I, I replaced the, uh, the ECU. I put a completely stock ECU back in the bike and went out and rode it at New York Safety Track on Saturday. And it was actually worse. And it just ran terrible all in all. Um, bucking and sputtering and not running at uh, full horsepower the whole time. So <laughs> end of Saturday, I took it out, uh, put this ECU back in it, uh, the one that's flashed with uh, my Alpha Racing uh, items. And it ran a lot better. It's still doing the same thing, though. Um, so I think my problem is a failing fuel pump. We're going to replace the fuel pump today. We're going to talk about the fuel pump and some other things on the bike. But um, let me get this set up on a tripod and we'll come over to my desk. We'll start talking about some of those things. As you can see, we are at my desk. This is our fuel pump assembly. Obviously, it is out of the bike. So we are starting from the point where the pump has already been removed from the tank and from the bike. If you don't know how to do that, go back and check out one of my um, one of my earlier videos. I believe it was in my S1000 track bike build video where I took the tank off and I actually removed this fuel pump and everything prior to. So uh, if you're not sure how to remove the fuel pump from the tank, uh, go back and check out that video. But I will say this, what you'll notice on this fuel pump assembly uh, is you'll notice that the float is not on this assembly. Now that is the case with all Gen 1 uh, S1000RRs. Don't quote me on Gen 2s, I don't have a Gen 2, and I've never had the fuel pump out on a Gen 2, um, so I, I don't know what's going on there. But uh, on all Gen 1s, uh, the float is not attached to the fuel pump assembly. So the float is that thing that sort of looks like the float uh, in the back of your toilet. The float lets your ECU know how much fuel is in the tank or how little fuel is in the tank. Uh, and it turns a little idiot light on. So when your fuel is, your tank is full, the float is all the way at the top, idiot light is off. Uh, when the, the fuel is low in your tank, uh, the float is all the way at the bottom, it triggers the sensor, turns the light on on the dash, and you know that you need to go and put fuel in your tank. That's how that works. That assembly is normally attached to this fuel pump assembly, but on Gen 1s, it's attached to the tank. However, when you flip your tank over and you go to remove this, uh, you'll be presented uh, with this. It'll look exactly like this with six screws in here. 
Uh, you'll remove these six eight millimeter screws. You'll take this cover off and then you'll start to extract this from the tank. What you'll notice is that there will be an electrical connector for your float. You'll need to disconnect that before you can take this fuel pump assembly all the way out the tank. Don't try to pull this all the way out because you'll end up yanking the float and you may actually sever the wires that are in there and you may need to buy yourself a new float and I'm not exactly sure you can buy the float separately. We'll talk about what you can and cannot purchase on this assembly here in just a second, but um, that may be one of the two things that you can purchase separately, but um, just be aware of that. You'll start to extract it from the tank a little bit. You'll expose this connector here you can see it here uh, and you'll just pull out the pigtail basically and then you can extract the fuel pump assembly um, out of the tank but um, this is a fuel pump assembly uh, and according to BMW this is non serviceable there are no parts really that you can replace in fact I think the only thing on this entire assembly that you can purchase from BMW as a replacement part as I think this screen element here this mesh screen element and the rubber gasket that seals this unit to the tank. Everything else is non-serviceable, meaning if you bring your bike in and they say, Mr. Smith or whatever your last name is, um, you need a new fuel pump and that's going to cost you 650 bucks for parts and another 150 bucks for labor. There you go. That's because the unit here, which is a pump, is bad, but they have to replace this entire assembly. Lucky for us, the aftermarket industry allows us uh, to replace some parts on this without having to spend all of that. So uh, let's go through some of the parts on this assembly. So I've already mentioned we have our mesh screen here. We need to remove that. It's connected to our fuel pump. The fuel pump is this unit that's inside this plastic sleeve. Fuel travels up through the mesh screen through your fuel pump, which, so, which means if any debris gets past this mesh screen, it automatically goes directly into your fuel pump, by the way. Uh, it travels through this plastic hose down through this assembly here, which is actually the fuel filter. This is non-serviceable. We can't see it. We can't get to it. We can't touch it. It's under this plastic cover. It's molded to this unit. So if our fuel filter ever clogs up to the point where fuel cannot flow or will not flow through it, we have to replace this entire assembly. That's it. We're done. There's nothing we can, we can't remove this and replace the fuel filter or do anything like that. It then flows through the bottom of your quick release and then out to your, uh, to your bike. We have our fuel pump controller here. So we're going to replace the screen. We're going to replace the pump and we are going to clean and back flush our fuel filter. And then hopefully our S1000RR will run a little bit better. So this is the fuel pump that I purchased. I think I got this on Amazon for like 35 bucks. Um, it comes with the fuel pump, the line, hose clamps, several different strainers uh, and this actual small rubber thing that we won't actually be using that actually goes on the end of the fuel pump like this and depending on which strainer you're using you put the strainer in here and this but our fuel pump goes into a plastic sleeve so we won't be using this and in fact we're probably going to use one one of these two strainers this is just a large flimsy strainer and this one you probably can't see it uh, in the camera but it actually has a uh, a spring in it so that the uh, bag sort of stays expanded. Not sure which one we're going to use, but it looks like either one of these will work. All right, so what do we need to do? So first thing we need to do is we need to take off this fuel strainer. Um, then after that, the fuel pump just slides up and off. We will then remove uh, our hose by removing this clamp. Um, we'll make a little slit. I've already done it, but we'll make a little slit to take this Take, make it easier to take off this uh, fuel hose, both ends. We'll then use our torque to take off this bracket and then everything will be removed. That will allow us to uh, easy access to start back flushing our fuel filter and we'll try to get this as clean as possible. So the first thing we need to do is we need to remove this, uh, this mess screen and it's held this entire assembly here, this mesh screen is attached to this entire assembly. So this whole thing, this whole circular thing needs to come off. And what you probably won't be able to see is it's held in place 
let me show you here on the new fuel pump. It's held to the new fuel pump on this little nub here. So down in here, down in here, there's a clip that we need to get our um, need our flathead screwdriver, either a small one like this or maybe even a bigger one. We need to get it down under there and easily, gently pry up until it pops off that nub. So we'll do that now. There we go. It comes off. And now you can see that metal clip that I was tell talking about right here. And there it is on a little nub right there. So now that's free. <clears throat> so now if we pull back these two little tabs and push with our thumb, our fuel pump. Oh, and I forgot. Normally, our electrical connector is connected here, so obviously disconnect your electrical connector. There's a ground here, your green wire as well. Pull that off as well, set that aside. And now just pull these tabs back, push with your thumb, and our fuel pump will come up and out like this. So now, I've already cut this, uh, this ear clamp. It's a one-time use clamp. I just used a Dremel to cut it off, to separate it. And then I use my X-Acto knife to make a slit into this fuel line so make it easier to pull off. So I'm going to lose some fuel here. So we'll set this aside and we'll put this in here. And now we can start to remove our fuel pump like so. And we're going to drain the rest of the fuel out of here. All right. So now we can get our T20 Torx and there are three screws, one, two, three, that hold this bracket on. So we just need to start removing those. one all right and then this bracket comes off there we go and now again, we get our X-Acto knife. We can make a small slit here so that it'll make this easier to get our fuel line off. And there we go. Now, believe it or not, this hose was actually um, a clear hose uh, when it went on from the factory. But because it's bathed in fuel and it's been has fuel running through it for the last 10 years, it turns it this little brown or gold or what have you. Here's our assembly. So now we want, we want to do is we want to flip it over and we want to remove our quick disconnect because there's a, uh, a one-way valve in there. So we'll grab our three-quarter inch wrench, loosen it up, and we will remove it. Let the rest of the fuel drain out. And now we can back flush our fuel filter. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to take one of our plugs here and we're going to put it over the end here like that. Set that in there like that. And we're going to grab fuel injector cleaner and we're going to put some amount in here and it's going to be 50 50. We're going to put half this half fuel into here and then basically pour it into the hole. So there's my ratio right.
I'm about five ounces right now. So I'm gonna go to about 10 ounces total. Like so. <clears throat> and then basically I'm just gonna pour this in the hole, slosh it around, shake it around, let it sit for a while, then come back and then we'll do this a couple more times. We'll let it flow out. And then um, once we see that it flows clear, we're done. So I'll pour this in here. Shake it around. So you might be wondering why, besides all of this, why all the fairings and everything off? Well, I scored a set of armor body fairings and um, everything is at the painters getting painted right now. I don't have a garage set up like I did back in Arizona where I can set up a little mini spray booth and because we have so much uh, rain out here and humidity, it affects paint. So I just said, you know what? It's better if I just have someone else do it. Okay, so I think we're full. Now you would just let this sit for a while and then you would come back after, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, remove the plug and let it drain out. So I'll be back when this process is done. Okay guys, while our fuel filter is over there sitting in the solution waiting to be back flushed, um, let's go ahead and install our fuel pump. Now, um, while that was sitting off camera, what I did was I removed the little uh, one-way clip from this unit. And we're not going to actually, we're not gonna use this. I've decided that um, I'm going to use this screen filter here, this mesh filter, along with this, along with our one-way clip. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. So basically, I'm gonna take our pump, I'm gonna take the cap off the end here, we're gonna pop it in. Uh, like that's gonna sit on like this so like so like that and then our mesh filter you can see it has a metal pressed metal ring on it so basically I'm gonna place this on here like so and then we're gonna use our one way and push it onto that tab once this is all the way down Now I'm going to take this a little one way and I'm just going to pop it if I can here onto the little nub. Like so. So our pump is installed. Mesh screen, we'll need to obviously take the cap off. Um, when we go to put it back on to our pump assembly. But now uh, we can install the hose technically. Um, so this is where our heat gun comes in. This might just slide on here, but typically you'll want to heat these up and then push it onto here. And that's what I think I'm going to do. So let me grab my heat gun and turn this on low heat. Wait until it gets warm here. All right, I'm gonna apply a little bit of heat to this, soften it up. We're not looking to melt it. All right, that should be good. Now we wanna push this onto our pump. Like so. Bang. So they've provided these clamps. Right. So our fuel pump is installed. Now we just need to finish our back flush and uh, then we'll put the bracket and everything back onto the fuel pump assembly. Okay guys, so it's been a few minutes for the first uh, flush 
And what I found works was a little bit of compressed air. Um, you want to use it at a very low PSI. I think I'm running about 20 PSI through uh, my compressed air here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the cap here that I put on top. And when I remove the plug, it's going to start to flow out. And then I'm going to use a little bit of compressed air to blow out the rest. You want to have on some, some eye protection. And you just put a little compressed air here and blow out the rest. And when I did this the first time, it came out, I wouldn't say black, but it was definitely... Uh, not clear. So I'm going to do this a few more times and then when we come back we'll do the final flush and we'll uh, flush it back through both sides then we'll put everything back together. Okay guys so I think I'm ready to do my final flush. I don't know if you can see uh, in the bowl but it's kind of black and dark and not very clean. That's all the stuff that's come out of the fuel filter. And my last few times that I've, I've blown through crap here it's come out pretty clear so we'll call this the final flush at least for the video anyway all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove our quick disconnect here i'm going to remove our cap on the bottom remaining fuel will flow out and then i'm going to get some compressed air again you should use Wear some glasses because this thing could blow back in your face. I'm going to blow out the rest like so. Just get some air to blow that stuff out. And then I'm going to blow it out the standard way. So normally fuel goes through this way. So I'm going to blow out this way as well. Just make sure that we don't have any debris on either side so we're going to call that clean so we'll set this aside now I have my quick disconnect here I'm gonna clean this up a bit you can see there used to be let's make looks like some putty maybe was on here so I'm gonna clean this up and then we are going to use some Teflon tape on here to seal it up go all right so now we are ready to reinstall our bracket so we want to get our t20 Torx so adjust that one I may need to use this one instead because as you can see the larger one is coming in contact with this guy over here so I'll need to take that one off and use this one that won't come into contact but not a big deal anyway oh that reminds me um, I wasn't paying attention so for this screen and this screen the one that had the little ears on it the kit provides two little one-way clips so I don't know if you can see that there's one there and there's another one in there so fyi you have those one-way clips i use the one from the um the original fuel pump this guy here but just so you know okay so now we'll need to grab our heat gun we we'll want to heat this end up push it onto here but we want to slide on our uh, hose clamp first all right that should be good turn this over and push this down onto here. Like so. All right. 
Now again, I don't think we need this, but um, we'll put it on here seeing they provided it. It looks like this black hose is a little bit longer than the stock one. That shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so now we can grab our wire harness. Plug you in there. Take our ground, a green cable for a ground. Plug that back on there like so. Make sure we are on. And we are all set. The last thing we need to do before we finish is we need to change our screen because this screen will not work. It's coming into contact with our assembly here. So we'll swap it out for this one. It'll sit like this or like this. Um, either way really doesn't matter as long as it doesn't come in contact with that. So we will get our small screwdriver and pry up on our one-way. Pop that off. There we go. And so we won't use that one. We can use this one like this. Like so. And that'll work. And it won't be hitting anything. So we can press this down. All done. Our fuel pump assembly is all set. So we've replaced our screen. We've replaced the pump. We've back flushed our fuel filter. And this is ready to go back in the bike. So uh, let's wrap this up. For this episode shall we well that is it for this episode guys we got our old fuel pump removed we got our new fuel pump installed we back flushed our fuel filter and cleaned it out in the next episode we're going to remove all eight injectors from the bike we'll clean those put them back in and then at the end of the month i'm riding with who am i riding with i'm riding with tony's at thompson in connecticut at the end of the month and we're going to see how this goes see if the bike runs better see if i still have the problem and go from there if the right bike runs better and it's everything is working i will replace this inexpensive cheap fuel pump and we'll install the performance unit from bren tuning to make sure that everything's okay but i am derek this is euro Super bike life you guys know the drill like comment subscribe share or smash it if you didn't like it until next time guys take care